go, go. All right, welcome back. Yeah, guess what? It's Liquid Lunch. We're broadcasting, of course, as always, on Biz TV every single day, Monday to Friday, noon to 2 Eastern. I'm usually in my home Corona Bunker Studios, but now I'm out on the road. I'm occupying Max Pub in Staten Island, New York, and it is a uh, TV news studio now. I just launched my new startup. It's called the Speak Easy News, and you can check it out at speakeasynews.com. If you're a bar owner or a restaurant owner and you want to make your business essential tomorrow, uh, sign up for the Speak Easy News Network. It's free to all my friends out there in the small business community. And um, we are not going to give up. And we never give up here on both sides of the story on Liquid Lunch either. Um, and we take it to the federal and national level where they're trying to steal the election. Others think that it's fair and honest. Uh, most of the country doesn't agree. But uh, we mix it up every week with my two good friends, uh, John Burnett, Managing Director, One Empire Group, David Eisenbach, uh, Columbia University professor, Democrat, Republican, guys. It's JT from Max Pub. Um, we're holding down the resistance here, but uh, JB, uh, I don't know if you're watching this here in New York, but the governor's just coming out every day lying to try to make us look like bad guys. Well, he didn't just start lying, right? Um, uh, the thing is, is that now he's also, I mean, he's, um, he, he's raising the... Uh, the cry for a federal bailout. But let's remember, you know, even before COVID, he had a $6 billion budget deficit, right? right. Um, so so he, he had fiscal nightmares even before COVID. So just like he used COVID to enrich himself in terms of, you know, uh, his Emmy Award, his, uh, his, his, his uh, book deal, if you will, and, and other um, advantages, he's he's trying to use COVID to try to you know um, take take care of his fiscal woes and fiscal mismanagement. And let's not forget, you know, we should put New Yorkers first. Uh, New York did actually spend a lot of money, you know, fighting and, and, and making sure that New Yorkers are safe and kept healthy. Uh, but 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 there's there's two dimensions here. There's two tracks, and and the New Yorkers and and and. Our fellow citizens abroad should should actually know and understand what's really going on in New York City. In New York yeah. City, I should say. You know, um, David, I'm sure you and the Columbia University crowd are appalled with mine and my friend's behavior here. Um, uh, well, actually, no. I, I look. Uh, we disagree on on the need to close bars and indoor dining uh, with the escalating surge numbers. But your stance and your taking it. Uh, to the level of protest and, and calling out government and, and standing up for your rights uh, should be applauded by every American. Wow. Well, thank you, my friend. Now, oh. let, me, let me get you to disagree with me for a minute. Uh, <laughs> Texas, Texas starts a lawsuit suing, um, you know, these swing states. Now, 17 other states have joined them. Uh, David, do you think that this has any merit or do you still stick with your original proclamation oh. that no, uh, the 35 lawsuits uh, launched by Trump and his allies have been rejected by the courts on every level, state level. Republicans and Democrats haven't won one single one. Texas has no standing to challenge how other states uh, do their elections. It's going to get thrown out just like Pennsylvania's lawsuit last night by the Supreme Court. Hey, Johnny B., I, I think I understand the uh, equal rights, the equal protection argument that well, if you're letting in fraudulent ballots in other states, then it diminishes everyone's one single vote because you've got ballots in there that aren't ballots. So we, everyone didn't get one vote. Is that sensible? Absolutely, John. The thing is, is that the Democrats want to count any vote. Republicans want to count legal votes. There are a myriad of different issues here, right? So, so if they're mail-in ballots, David, every mail-in ballot should have an envelope. But guess but, what? The, the, the not not every mail-in ballot has an envelope. Look, That's uh, an issue. Look, it's, it's an academic That's an issue. If, you it, won, if, if Trump won one, just one, instead of losing 35, I'd say maybe you had a point. But you haven't won one. Yeah, but, 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 but David, you know, um, you know, future, 
past performance is no guarantee for future success in this <laughs> business, right? And the point is, the point is, there's no better time than the present, and we have to look at what's on the table now, right? Prior lawsuits did not have all of these issues laid out comprehensively, right? Because new information was developing in real time, David. So, so while you want to focus on cases that are already settled, let's talk about the case that is in front of us, the amicus brief, right? Okay. 17 and, states. And in fact, Arizona, I think, joined in, John. So now we're up to yeah. 18. I think that's about 36 36% of all states, so more than one third of the states in our right. union are contesting this. That's right. Pretty amazing. Hey guys, we got a couple of minutes left. I do want to ask you about this California stuff. This woman, um, you know, broke down in tears. She has a Hollywood set right next door to her. You find out that Saturday Night Live is using a loophole to let people be extras in a show. Now I'm doing the same thing. Do you think we? Do you think we can get other people to understand that if the loophole is good for the big guys, it could be for the little guys too? What these politicians have to understand is that you can't cave in to your campaign contributors and your big corporations and allow them uh, to do what small businesses are trying to do. There has to be a level playing field. Otherwise, it feeds right into all the conspiracy series and complaints uh, like yours out on Staten Island. I disagree with you, David, on this in, in this regard. It's not a conspiracy. It's very clear and very blatant. People like Governor Newsom, right, they believe in big eyes and little U's. He was out dying with no, with no mask. Right? He's doing everything that he that he's telling you not to do, he's doing it. He's also making carve outs for his buddies. You know, in Hollywood, in entertainment. So we agree on that respect. In a old Saturday Night Live comedy? This is not a joke, David. It's it's yeah. hypocrisy and corruption. I totally agree with you. Yes, I wish I had my bell. I'd be ringing it like mad right now. You guys are finally <laughs> agreeing on something. And so you know guys, you've been with me from the beginning. So I can tell you this. We're not allowed to sell liquor here anymore, okay, as it stands right now. But nobody knows as good as you guys that when you come to the Liquid Lunch Studios, we don't sell liquor. We give <laughs> So the studio is open. Um, we're going to be broadcasting live 24 hours a day because if the government wants to try to come in and take me now, we're going to have it all on national TV live. So uh, awesome. the drinks are cold. You guys are welcome to come on down to Mac <laughs> anytime you want. I'd love to have a reunion right here on air. Awesome. I'm no chaser, here. no chasers. <laughs> I'm going to be here for the foreseeable future, but uh, thank you very much, guys. Excellent. Right, be, be safe, John. I yeah. appreciate David, I you. And you join can. me in a week. We're talking about everything you need to know. We cover all sides of it right here on Liquid Lunch. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back right after this with some news of the day. I'm going to give you some late-breaking news on how the sheriff of New York City and the governor lied right to our faces yesterday. You're not going to believe it.